How are you doing, Brian King, UK Flooring TV? Uh, today we're over at the Flooring Industry Training Association over in Loughborough. Uh, we're joined by CFA uh, Flooring Apprentice of the Year winner, uh, Mike Waldron. Uh, Mike, how are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. How are you? Not so bad, thanks. Uh, Mike, when you think of apprentices, you generally think of like 16, 17 year olds. Uh, that's not generally the case. Uh, how old are you? So, I've just turned 30. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I think a lot of apprentices, especially in the construction industry, are a lot younger. Um, but I don't think that's necessarily true of all apprentices. So it's been quite, you know, I, I have met quite a few people who have came into the trade a little bit older. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's quite refreshing to see. I think as well, with older apprentices, you do tend to get people who, you know, sometimes a little bit more switched on, a bit more engaged, a bit more certain of exactly what they're trying to do and achieve and, um, you know, trying to apply themselves maybe in a different way. And, a bit more life experiences than maybe a 16 year old straight out of school who's trying to readjust from that sort of environment of being in education to coming straight into you know a construction site whereas I think as an older apprentice you've got a few more life experiences that help you out you know communication and talking to people on sites and you know uh, trying to learn as quickly as you can. Uh, so have you been in the industry say from like leaving school or are you, uh, uh, did you come into the industry later on? Yeah so I mean I, I worked in the corporate and sort of office jobs um, I left school at 17, so left school at 17, took a job in, um, in an office and kind of stayed there and kind of worked hard. I mean, the opportunity for apprenticeship kind of passed me by and I didn't take it. And, you know, it was, it was okay working in offices. I never really particularly enjoyed it that much. And I enjoyed working with people. I enjoyed the, you know, being part of a team and going into the office. And then when COVID hit and lockdown came and I essentially sat at home every single day with just the, me and the laptop and just the bare bones of the job, it sort of really hit home exactly how much I didn't like what I was doing and you know I decided it was a good time to, to make a change so yeah I started looking around at different trades you know it wasn't necessarily the flooring stood out to me I was trying to see what I could get into um, and yeah I mean flooring is a bit of appeal because it wasn't going to take four or five years to pass you know there was it looked like there was a shortage of floor layers out there and I met a floor layer actually in the village that I live and I started going out with him one or two days and just sort of doing a taster here and there um, and then from that I sort of signed on to an introduction course at a training academy, did four or five days in domestic and did a few more and it eventually got to the point that I was sort of certain it was what I wanted to do and I started doing a bit of work with a, a small guy, sort of um, one man band and we did a few sort of carpet jobs and one or two sort of light commercial jobs. Um, I knew then it was something I wanted to get into but obviously the issue is trying to self-fund and that's why when I had the opportunity to come to Hillside, who I work for now, and to take on the apprenticeship, it really appealed because it was a chance to earn whilst I was learning and you know, to have all your training you know, provided over a year, two year period by really good tutors at floor train um, and to be able to pick up that knowledge up without having to pay for it myself and crucially all that on-site experience you know, from fitters who have been fitting 10, 20, you know, 30 odd years. So did you uh, do your apprenticeship at Floor Train, yeah? Yeah, so I travelled up to Floor uh, Train in Doncaster. Um, I've been on that since January last year, so I'm hopefully coming to the end of the next couple of months. Right. Uh, winning the CFA Apprentice of the Year, uh, how did you find out about the competition? Yeah, so, so I joined Hill, uh, Hillside last uh, January um, and, you know, sort of trying to learn as much as I could about the flooring industry. So, you know, doing things like watching UK Flooring TV and, uh, subscribing to the CFJ and it's one of those sort of awards it's really promoted so I first heard about it last year when the competition was open um, and then reading last year's winner I knew back then obviously being in the industry for you know, eight weeks I wasn't going to have a good enough application but I tried to go through and learn you know about what previous winners had done and what the sort of competition was looking for and I've kind of spent the past year trying to build up a portfolio of different works I've done you know examples photos videos and Try to learn as much as I could about the industry to put together a strong uh, application this year. How did you actually enter the competition? So to enter the, uh, the competition and to get your application, you have to go on the CFA website. Um, you have to sort of put your details in and then you have to have your employer write a recommendation for you. Your college also write a recommendation and your tutors sort of talk a little bit about you and uh, your sort of strengths and weaknesses and sort of write, do a little write-up for you. And then I suppose the key bit is your own input. So. There's a series of questions you've got to answer, you know, why you came into the flooring industry, um, you know, why you should be crowned the winner, did different things about what you love most about it. Um, so I was able to speak there, I suppose, about the, you know, the thing I really like in the flooring industry is seeing the change it can make to a space. So again, you know, hands-on and working in so many different environments from 
uh, like schools and hospitals to research labs or F1 team headquarters, you know, seeing the transformation from what's a building site to when we're putting floor coverings in and seeing that finished product makes a huge change. So I was able to speak a lot about that. Um, we also had to submit photos and videos of my work. Um, so it was nice to be able to show that portfolio that I've built over the past year. Um, and for me as well to look back at the progression, you know, from some of the early stuff I've been taking photos and videos of and seeing the progression that I've made over the past sort of 12 months was really nice. And then the key thing as well is I had to do a case study. So I put together an example of a 4,000 square metre project we'd worked on where we'd been installing um, flat fit and cap and coat vinyls, carpet tiles and sort of talking about, you know, the considerations you have to make on any site with subfloor, subfloor prep, um, some of the challenges we encountered. So it was really nice as well for me to sort of sit back and review, I suppose, a big project I've worked on, but also, you know, implement and talk about some of the, the things we picked up or the knowledge I'd learned, you know, things about DPMs or primers or, you know, why we're doing things in a certain order um, was really good. So, yeah, you submit all those things through and then it goes through to the CFA and I think there's a panel of judges who review everyone's applications and then on the back of that, sort of pick their overall winner for the year. Right. Uh, my great selection of prizes is approximately £7,000 worth. Uh, what sorts of things have you won? Yeah, so I mean, there's a load of prizes there. Um, things from sort of toolkits, um, there's credit notes for different manufacturers to get sort of uh, their products. There's uh, things like welders and power tools or uh, laser, laser measurers. So there's a real big wealth there of different uh, tools. And I think the key thing as well is, you know, starting, coming into the industry, all that kit, it's so sort of hard to attain and trying to you know, buy it yourself or yeah. you're constantly having to borrow someone else's welder. And the issue with those sort of things is, you know, everyone has them at different temperatures, everyone has their own way of working and you're trying to learn using everyone's different kits. So to win the prize and, you know, from all the great sponsors who are such big names in the industry and to be recognised by them and to get my hands on such um, sort of brand new top of the range kit is a massive help starting my career. So everybody's going to be borrowing yours. <laughs> Uh, you say you work for Hillside Contracts, uh, what sort of flooring do Hillside special, yeah. specialise in? Sorry. So Hillside are contract flooring and also white rock specialists, so uh, we're quite a large company, we've got around 40 fitters and subcontractors as well for us, who work for us as well. Um, we do everything really from sort of school, um, uh, school sort of work, from hospitals, as I mentioned sort of Formula F1 team headquarters. Um, you know, there's a whole sort of range of projects. It's one of the things I love most about working at Hillside is sort of, you know, going up and down over the sort of country and sort of getting hands on with all these different projects and the sort of the large scale that they work at. Uh, what sort of flooring do you generally fit? Yeah, so again, it relates obviously to what Hillside do. So a lot of time is cap and cove, uh, flat fit and carpet tiles. I think the thing I enjoy most is the cap and cove uh, side of things. So, you know, working on wet rooms or you know, sometimes in really massive large areas such as canteens or, or kitchens, installing that. Um, and sort of, you know, the process of the subfloor prep as well, making sure that's perfect and then coming on to the welding side of things. You know, it's been one of the most difficult bits of the apprenticeship to learn is the capping cove and the commercial floor inside of it. But I think that's why I've kind of enjoyed doing it the most and why I love getting hands on with it the most as well. Uh, the apprenticeship scheme covers both commercial and domestic. How did you find the domestic side, although you don't do much of it? Yeah, it's quite interesting. So when you're at college, when you are training, obviously you're meeting the other uh, people who are also apprentices, and some specialise in domestics, some specialise in commercial. So, you know, get hands on with the stuff that you do day in, day out. It's quite nice and you kind of excel quite well at that. But when you're getting hands on with, for instance, you know, uh, fitting carpet to a staircase or using winders and it's something you're not encountering, um, you know, it can be challenging at times trying to learn something new, but I think that's what kind of appeals for the apprenticeship as well, because you're not just getting one bit that you're specialising in, you're getting this whole broad scope of the flooring industry. Um, and a lot of the skills that you're learning, you know, your knife skills or the things you need to consider, you can pick up and transfer across to other things as well. Uh, Mike, there's a massive shortage in uh, up and coming floor layers in the industry. How important do you think the apprenticeship scheme is? Yeah, I think it's crucial. So, you know, if we look into how many apprentices we've got, you know, in the industry at the moment and obviously looking to grow that number, that's one of the key ways to get people in. Because like I said one of the issues I had was to come into the industry, especially when you're older, if you're self funding, you know, it's so expensive to do. The apprenticeship scheme allows you to learn and get hands on experience on site every single day with people with all that experience. 
I think, you know, we look at the things that the CFA are doing, such as the future of FITS's program um, and schemes like that, they're sort of really key and crucial. Um, I think how, you know, companies interact with that and how we promote the flooring industry, not just to, you know, the sons and nephews and daughters and nieces of people in the industry already, but how do we get it out to a wider selection of people? You know, as the flooring industry, we're working in schools every single summer, but how much are we actually doing with those schools to tell them when the pupils are in there about the flooring industry, you know, about the benefits of it? And I think, you know, a lot of the focus is on the money you can earn, which is fantastic, but to someone at school, the money doesn't really mean much because you can tell them they can earn 40K or 50K, but they don't really know what that transfers to in the real world. So I think the, the key things in the flooring industry are, you know, being creative, the, the hands-on difference you can make, the changes to a room and, you know, bringing buildings to life, uh, those sort of things that really appeal to people, not just you'll also earn a good salary doing it. We've discussed this many times, like you never hear anybody wanting to come into the industry. They either fall in it or the, the, the parents or their uncle, they, they, they come into it that way. Yeah. But it is an absolute, it's a brilliant industry to be in. Yeah, it is. And I think, you know, it's not just the flooring industry. I think there's a lot of smaller trades, um, you know, roofing, for instance, where you've got, there's not that many routes into it. You know, it's trying to find out and find a route into getting into the industry. I think once people see a bit of it, you know, they want more. That's why, you know, so many apprentices end up staying in the industry. That's why, you know, people stay for life. They don't end up swapping out trades or, or careers. Um, but I think it is just that. It's trying to get you know, more people to be aware of the flooring industry and the wide variety from someone putting down carpet tiles in a massive office to someone doing the intricacies of trying to fit LVT you know, around an island in the kitchen and all the differences that we get in the flooring industry and that massive way, uh, range and scope of different projects, different materials to work with. As I said, being hands-on and creative is so appealing to so many people. It's just you know, a question for us to get that message out there. Yeah, I think it's a great idea going into schools, telling the kids on what opportunities they've got in the flooring industry, what, what, what they can earn, what, what skills they can develop. Yeah, definitely. And I think as well, like I say, we're already in the schools. We're in the schools already fitting the floors. So how much of a jump is it to also say, you know, as a trade, unlike say plumbers and like that, we're literally in there for weeks every single summer, you know, to be doing more to offer things like work experience to young people in there, or to say, to talk more about, you know, how exciting it can be. You know, we've got kids nowadays who spend so much time on things like TikTok and Instagram, but the transformation you can make in the flooring, you know, doing a flooring job in a couple of hours, it's that in real life, and it's being the ability to be the person that makes that difference. Exactly. Uh, Mike, what advice would you give someone uh, thinking of coming into the industry? So I think, you know, the thing I've learned is to, I suppose, try and listen as much as possible, because, you know, the flooring industry I've found since joining it is full of people who are willing to share their time, their experiences, their knowledge, um, you know, from the people you meet on site to Facebook groups, um, training courses, you know, around the country, uh, even manufacturers, you know, who offer their own training courses. Um, I've been in one or two of those myself as well. So I think it's really about trying to take as much in as possible, but try and, you know, use all the avenues that are open. You know, there's flooring podcasts, there's UK flooring TV, there's the CFJ, there's industry magazines, there's so much out there for you to learn from and you know it really is just try and take in as much as possible because although you can't compete on experience, you know that takes time, the knowledge you can compete on, you can try and learn as much as possible because people are willing to share that information, it's not a closed shop. Uh, what are your plans for the future Mike? Yeah so my plans for the future, I mean you know past the apprenticeship, so I'm still an apprentice so I'm hoping to pass that in the next couple of months. And then I think, you know, I'd like to get more involved in the projects I'm currently working on, but in more sort of, I suppose, senior role. You know, I'd like to be involved more, maybe as a supervisor or sort of helping these projects come to life a bit more and being involved a little bit more in the decision-making process and helping, you know, clients and site managers to deliver projects on time. Um, but I'd also like to work, you know, a lot with apprentices. You know, one of the things I've said when I, in my application is working with the Future Fitters programme and trying to do more to not just say, you know, oh, we as the flooring industry need to get more people in, but actually trying to take action on that and try and do things that promote, you know, the industry to more people, the apprenticeship route to more people and try and see what we can do. So I think, yeah, you know, for me, it's about continuing fitting and trying to get a more senior role, um, but also, yeah, doing more to try and promote the flooring industry as a whole. Well, Mike, a massive congratulations. Uh, thanks very much for coming down speaking to us and uh, best of luck in the future. Thank you. Cheers.